Hi, I'm Anand Karamanchi, a nephrologist at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. I am Viren Sommers, a cardiologist uh, and professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Dr. Summers, uh, why should the hypertension community care about sleep? So, um, aren't sleep and blood pressure are very closely linked. Basically, in a physiologic sense, uh, when people fall asleep, the blood pressure falls. What we know is if your blood pressure doesn't fall at night when you're sleeping, you fall into the non-dipper category and that puts you at an increased risk of cardiovascular endpoints. Um, we also know that, that if you have problems during sleep, if you develop obstructive sleep apnea, it will raise your blood pressure at night and raise your blood pressure even during the daytime. And the third um, compelling reason to, to care is that people who are sleep deprived, who don't get enough sleep at night, whether it's by choice or whether it's by, by some external cause, these people chronically will tend to have higher blood pressures than those who sleep normally. So uh, in, in your opinion, uh, do all patients with hypertension, would you recommend them to get a screen for uh, some sort of sleep abnormalities? No, no I wouldn't because the number of people with hypertension is so huge that logistically and, and economically it wouldn't be feasible to, to study all these people. So we need to be very selective about who we study and just uh, some of the points to, to think about who to study would be people who have witnessed apneas, meaning the wife or husband says, I see him or her stop breathing during sleep. That's called a witnessed apnea, a great sign of obstructive apnea. The other is if you're hypertensive and you have daytime somnolence, if you fall asleep during the daytime very easily, then you quite likely have sleep apnea. If you have significant obesity, especially central obesity, and hypertension, chances are you have obstructive sleep apnea. And of course, if you have disruptive snoring, if you snore so loudly that uh, your wife wakes up. Now, the other group that, that physicians need to be aware of is resistant hypertension. Patients with a resistant hypertension have a very high prevalence of obstructive sleep apnea. And there are some data suggesting that if we diagnose and treat the sleep apnea, the hypertension becomes much easier to control. That's terrific. Uh, the next question I had, I found this uh, point that you made in your talk quite fascinating on uh, the relationship between weight gain and sleep deprivation. Could you tell us a bit about uh, th that relationship and why that's important uh, for the hypertension community? Sure. So we, what we know from the literature and from epidemiologic data is, is that people who are obese don't sleep well. That could be various reasons, cause and effect is not clear. What is emerging from studies from, from a number of groups, both in Europe and in, in North America, is that if you take healthy people and sleep deprive them, if you give them only four or five hours of sleep a night, and you do this for several nights, maybe a week, what you find is these people tend to start eating more. And in some studies, you can actually find and identify a weight gain after about a week of sleep deprivation. So, so there are data suggesting then that, that not sleeping enough makes you want to eat more. Whether you eat more carbohydrates or fat or, or protein, we don't know. But certainly your total calorie intake uh, increases significantly, thereby predisposing you to weight gain in the future. And then the obvious follow-up question is, with this epidemic of sleep deprivation that we are facing with the use of smartphones and, and, and other devices that emit light and keep us awake at night, is this population-wide sleep deprivation setting us up for a larger increase in the prevalence of hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disease? Well, thank you. That was uh, fascinating. Thanks very much. Uh, had, uh, just a follow-up question on that. You said the major uh, risk for sleep deprivation are all these environmental risk factors, but are there, is there a genetic component to sleep deprivation as well? Are there fat? Not that I'm aware of that is well established. Okay. What, we, what we know is that some people need less sleep, some people need more sleep. And there are people who just get away with less sleep and do fine, never have a problem, live till 90, totally healthy. So clearly there's a, there seems to be a genetic determination of how much sleep we need. Whether our genes define how we will respond to deprivation less than what we need I think is likely, but I don't know the specifics. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks very much.